Good afternoon. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being here. Uh, I would note that it is, it's been a while since uh, we've had a briefing here. Uh, some folks who comment on this uh, seem not to know that when the president travels, I or Josh travel with him, and we brief on the road, and we have been briefing uh, regularly on Air Force One and elsewhere. Uh, but it is a, a, a very good to be back here uh, today with all of you. I have no announcements here at the top, so I'll go straight to your questions. Ben. Thanks, Dave. A couple of questions for you on Libya. Um, the State Department just got a briefing last night, and in, in the context of that, they uh, said that they never, never concluded that the assault in Benghazi was part of a protest on the anti-Muslim film. They were asked about that, and they said that was that was not our conclusion. And of course, we heard here for many days from from you and others that that was the the underlying cause of it until more facts came to light. Uh, isn't that problematic that two arms of the administration, the White House and State Department, had a different conclusion from the very beginning about what happened? Let's be clear about what the State Department is saying. Pat Kennedy, the Under Secretary of State for Management, is testifying on the Hill today about this very matter. I will quote to you now from his prepared testimony. No one in the administration has claimed to know all the answers. We have always made clear that we are giving the best information we have at the time, and that information has evolved. For example, if any administration official, including any career official, were on television on Sunday, September 16th, they would have said what Ambassador Rice said, which goes to your point. The information she had at that point from the intelligence community is the same that I had at that point. At the, at, as time went on, additional information became available. Clearly, we know more today than we did on the Sunday after the attack, but as the process moves forward and more information becomes available, we will be sure to continue consulting with you. That is uh, Under Secretary of State for Management Pat Kennedy today. The point we have made all along, Ben, as you know, is that uh, initial assessments in the immediate aftermath of the attack in Benghazi were made, and there was a government-wide assessment that was uh, the foundation of what Ambassador Rice said, what I said, and what others said. It is what we knew based on the limited facts we had available to us at that time. Ambassador Rice very clearly said on Sunday that these were preliminary conclusions based on uh, the facts and the intelligence that we had available at the time. And they were conclusions of uh, the intelligence community for the entire government. Uh, I've made clear repeatedly uh, when I've been here and on the road talking about this uh, that no one is more interested in finding out exactly what happened in Benghazi than the President of the United States. That is why he directed his Secretary of State the day after the attack uh, to take the actions that she did to set up the, account, uh, the Accountability Review Board uh, to assess uh, the security posture in Benghazi and elsewhere. Uh, it is why the FBI is investigating the attack itself uh, to find out who is responsible. It's why the President is so focused on ensuring that the perpetrators of the attack who killed four Americans are brought to justice. Uh, it's why the President has uh, made clear and, and directed that action is taken to ensure the security of our diplomatic personnel and of our diplomatic facilities. Um, again, from the beginning, we have provided information based uh, on the facts that we knew as they became available, based on assessments by the intelligence community, not opinions, assessments by the IC, by the intelligence community. Uh, and we have been clear all along that this was an ongoing investigation, that as more facts became available, uh, we would uh, make you aware of them uh, as appropriate. And we've done that. And I think that the testimony of Pat Kennedy today reflects just that. Now that more facts are available, is it the view of the President that there was inadequate security at the consulate at the time of the attacks? I think there is no question that when four Americans were killed at a diplomatic facility, uh, that something went wrong, and that is why we need to uh, assess through the account uh, Accountability Review Board uh, the security posture there, the security posture of uh, other facilities uh, around the world, especially in areas that are dangerous, as certainly Libya in, in this post-revolution stage uh, and the, uh, this period of uh, transition in that country uh, is. Uh, and that's uh, absolutely a focus of the President's concern right now, is that we make sure that our diplomatic personnel who go abroad, just like our military personnel, but sometimes uh, Americans aren't as aware of it, uh, a lot of diplomats go to very dangerous places and take enormous risks. Uh, 
because they're serving their country and they're serving the interests of the American people abroad. Uh, because it is in our interests that America be represented in a country like Libya, a country that the United States and its people uh, played a role in liberating from a tyrant. Uh, it is in our interest for uh, diplomats as well as military personnel to be in dangerous places around the world uh, working to bring about democratic change and working to protect the American people. Uh, but he is very focused on the steps that need to be taken to bring about uh, enhanced security where appropriate for diplomatic personnel around the world. One last one. Um, John Brennan met with Libya's president today, and the White House statement about it uh, says that they discussed ways Libya can take specific steps to bring the suspected killers to justice. Can you tell us what specific steps are being referred to there? What, what does President Obama want to see done that isn't being done yet? Well, I, it's not a question of what's not being done. It's a question of making sure that we're working uh, cooperatively with the Libyan government in the investigation to bring to justice those who were responsible, the very uh, goal the President spoke about in the immediate aftermath of uh, this uh, terrible attack. Uh, you know, uh, John Brennan was in Libya to discuss a number of issues, and it, it, not just this investigation, but uh, it is certainly in our interest in the pursuit of that goal that we work very cooperatively with the Libyans. Thanks, man. So back on the committee hearings today, mm -hmm. um, the uh, former head of the U.S. security team in Libya, um, it was uh, Lieutenant Colonel Andrew Wood, told the committee that uh, diplomatic security there was drawn down ahead, of, uh, not long before the, the, the attack on, on the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, and that U.S. Uh, US diplomats did not have enough protection. And uh, uh, what, can you give me what level of concern the administration has on, on that point? Just, uh, well, let me say, as I just said, that we lost four Americans. We lost a U.S. ambassador and three other Americans uh, in the attack in Benghazi. And there's no question that the uh, security was not uh, enough to prevent that tragedy from happening. Beyond that, I would simply say that this is a matter under investigation. It is a matter under review at the directive of the President uh, and the Secretary of State. Uh, and uh, the President is absolutely committed to following the facts uh, wherever they may lead and to making sure that we take steps to ensure that our diplomatic personnel around the world, in Libya and elsewhere, uh, are adequately protected and that our facilities are secured. Keeping in mind that it is inherently risky to represent the United States in some countries around the world that are very dangerous. And we sometimes uh, except in situations like this, uh, forget that we have thousands of Americans abroad bravely representing us and our values uh, in places like Libya uh, and other uh, regions of the world that can be very dangerous, uh, in, in countries and regions where uh, being a representative of the American government can be risky. But it is the President's commitment and the Secretary of State's commitment that we take the necessary steps to provide the security that is needed in, uh, in these specific areas. But are you ready to acknowledge at this point that there were some mistakes made in, in the I, I, I think I have said that there is no question that when four American personnel uh, are killed in an attack on a diplomatic facility, that the security there was not adequate to, to prevent that from happening. Uh, it is not an acceptable outcome, obviously, that four Americans were killed. And that from the day that this happened, the President has been focused on uh, ensuring that we're doing everything we can to bring the perpetrators to justice, and making sure that diplomatic personnel and facilities around the world uh, are protected, uh, and that we take the steps necessary to find out what happened and why. And one other subject, um, the fiscal cliff. Uh, Senator Schumer uh, stirred some controversy yesterday when he said that cutting tax rates for top earners should not be part of any future negotiations about an overhaul of the, of the tax code. Um, and the President has, uh, in the past, been open to, to cutting tax rates on the highest earners as part of tax reform. Um, so I wonder, does Schumer's comments in any way reflect a hardening of the Democrats' stance on this? Does the President still support uh, the, uh, the idea of cutting taxes, tax, uh, uh, tax rates on top earners in, in a tax reform? Well, the President has made clear that he supports tax reform broadly, but what Senator Schumer is making is a very important point, that the wealthiest must pay their fair share in any balanced approach to reducing our deficit in a way that protects the middle class, seniors, 
and our ability to invest in education and innovation. He's making the very clear point that the President has made and others have made, uh, that uh, it is uh, fanciful thinking to imagine that you can give more tax cuts to millionaires and billionaires and that the pixie dust of trickle-down economics will somehow uh, erase any damage to the deficit or hold harmless the middle class. It is uh, a mirage. It's not realistic. Uh, the broader issues of tax reform are something that are very, uh, uh, very much interest the President of the United States, but his approach has always been that everybody's got to pay their fair share, everybody's got to get a fair shot, and everybody has to play by the same set of rules. And that is the undergirding principle of his economic approach. It's the foundation of the way he views this debate uh, that he's having both in the election and he's been having with Republicans on Capitol Hill. Uh, that if we take a balanced approach that includes uh, increased revenues by asking millionaires and billionaires to pay a little bit more, we can reduce our deficit significantly, four trillion dollars, uh, while making sure that the middle class doesn't have its taxes go up and making sure that we invest in education and infrastructure and innovation. The alternative choice that's pre presented is that we should lower taxes for millionaires and billionaires. And to, in order to pay for that, we have to turn Medicare into a voucher program. We have to gut investments in education and innovation, research and development, border security, diplomatic security. That's not the right answer. That's not the right approach. We've tried it. It didn't work. We shouldn't go back. Jay. Lieutenant Colonel Wood um, and uh, Eric Nordstrom, the former regional security officer, uh, have both suggested uh, that there were efforts from the U.S. Embassy in Libya uh, to have more security, and the State Department, State Department officials, wouldn't let it happen. Why? Why didn't the State Department listen to these men on the ground in Libya who wanted there to be more security. Jake, as I said, there is no question that uh, the result of what happened in Benghazi is not acceptable. Four Americans killed is not an acceptable situation. And that is why the President moved so quickly to ensure that uh, an investigation was launched to bring the perpetrators to justice, the killers to justice, and a review was launched at the State Department uh, to look at our, dip our security posture at the Bengali facility, I mean, uh, Bengali, at the Benghazi facility and uh, elsewhere. Um, you know, s those matters are under investigation. They are also being discussed in a public hearing on Capitol Hill today by uh, the individuals and officials, both uh, career and otherwise, who know the specifics of that. Uh, what I can tell you is what the President's interest is in. He is very interested in bringing the perpetrators to justice and ensuring uh, that we find out what happened, why it happened, and taking steps to ensure that it never happens again. Well, it's been roughly a month. You have absolutely no idea why it happened? You don't know why the State Department Well, I think, I think, as we're hearing on Capitol Hill today, we have learned a great deal uh, as this investigation has progressed. Uh, and we have been very clear about uh, what we have known at different stages of this process over the last several weeks and what we have yet to learn and the fact that at each stage the investigation continues and more facts may be developed that uh, change our understanding of what happened. Uh, State Department officials are on Capitol Hill today being very clear about what we know now based on uh, the several weeks of investigation that have taken place. Uh, they are also making clear that the investigation continues and that the Accountability Review Board uh, that is looking into the issues of diplomatic security. Uh, is continuing its work. Uh, you know, I'm not prepared to uh, preview the results of an investigation that, or review that, haven't, uh, that are not yet complete uh, or to second guess uh, what uh, the experts in the field are going to uh, conclude. President Obama, shortly after the attack, uh, told uh, 60 Minutes that regarding Mitt Romney's response to the uh, attacks, uh, specifically in Egypt, the President said that Romney has a tendency to shoot first and aim later. Given the fact that so much was made out of the video uh, that apparently had absolutely nothing to do with the attack on Benghazi, that there wasn't even a protest outside the Benghazi post, didn't President Obama shoot first and aim later? Uh, first of all, Jake, I think your assessment about what we know now uh, is not complete. 
but I would simply say that the because I'm, I'm just going by what the State Department said yesterday there is no question that in the region including in Cairo there were demonstrations uh, reacting to uh, the uh, release of that video uh, and I will leave it to uh, those who are testifying on the hill to talk about as they are I said yesterday no, there was no protest that that's not what you said though you, there, there were, I'm talking about in Benghazi right I'm not, I'm not disputing that there was a protest but what we said at the time is our intelligence community assessed that the attack began spontaneously following protests earlier that day at our embassy in Cairo okay again this is a moving picture and people who on the night of an attack or the day after claim they know all the facts uh, without making clear that what we know is based on preliminary information uh, aren't being straight and they're uh, in some cases trying to uh, politicize a situation that should not be politicized I think that's what the president was getting at and I think many other people felt the same way this president's focus has been from day one on going after those who killed four Americans, on protecting uh, the thousands of diplomatic personnel we have around the world in those facilities that they work in, and on uh, making sure that a thorough investigation is conducted to find out what happened, uh, and look, that looks into our security posture both in Benghazi and elsewhere. I'd have to go back and read the transcript, but I remember both President Obama and Secretary Clinton talking about the video and the remarks in the ceremony when Ambassador Stevens' remains were returned to this country. Maybe, I, maybe I'm remembering that wrong, but it seems to me there was a lot of talk about the video in relation to, to the tragedy that unfolded. I don't have anything new for you about what the assessments are of how uh, the attack came about, uh, what the role of protests and uh, demonstrations in other parts of the region were. I will point you to those who are testifying on Capitol Hill about this very matter as we speak. Well, can I just ask one last question, and that is Democrats have, have talked about budgets being cut for uh, embassy security, uh, and I'm wondering if that's something that the White House believes was a problem as well, that there was there had something to do with uh, money being um, withheld by House Republicans or whomever. Well, I, look, this is the, the, the issue of the security specifically in Benghazi, more broadly in Libya, and more broadly than that uh, in the region and around the world is under review by the Accountability Review Board. And, and those assessments should be made by those who are investigating it. Uh, what is simply a matter of fact is that this president has uh, fought for and put forward uh, funding that he believes is necessary for our diplomatic personnel and diplomatic security around the world, and others have uh, sought to reduce that funding over these past several years uh, because of a, an approach to our budget priorities that prioritizes tax cuts for millionaires and billionaires. That's just a fact. I am not making an assessment based on this incident. There's no question that uh, what happened in Benghazi was a tragedy and it was that, that there was not a, a, you know, security enough to protect those four Americans. Yeah. Thank you. Um, when did the White House learn that, that there was no protest in Benghazi? Yeah, we've been very forthright all along on the information that we've had based on not opinion, not what folks have said or want to say on television, but on the assessments uh, by uh, those who make these assessments for the United States government. And you know, we have discussed all along the fact that our assessments are preliminary uh, and that they will change based on new information that's become available through the investigations that are underway. Uh, you know, I, I, I know for several weeks now we've talked about uh, the fact that more information has become available. I've been very candid about that from here and very clear about uh, what we knew at the time, what the assessments from the intelligence community was were at the time, and, and, and what they've been over time. The uh, DNI put out a statement making clear that initial assessments were revised and clarified as more information was gathered. Uh, we're focused on the facts as we get them. We're not focused on opinions about what happened, uh, and, and we're certainly not focused on efforts to politicize this matter. Right. But, but I'm still trying to understand when you learned that there was no protest. I mean, I, we're just I think you now. saw the head of the NCTC testify 
uh, about what we knew at that time, uh, which was after both I and Ambassador Rice and others spoke uh, about what we knew prior to that. And it was uh, Mr. Olson's assessment in his testimony, which was the same assessment that we all have and we all receive and we all work from, uh, that new information had led us to believe that it was uh, at that time an assessment based on that information. Uh, there had not been a protest, but that there were, uh, you know, that uh, elements uh, had been involved in the attack, uh, extremist elements, uh, and that it was a terrorist attack. I'll, I would point out, however, that the President himself said the day or after, or, the, or two days after, that referred to it as an act of terror. Since there were so many unknowns at the very beginning, why even then um, speculate that it could have been caused by this film? Why not just say, we're waiting for all the facts to come in? Yeah, based on what we knew at the time, based on the assessments, not our opinion, not uh, mine or anybody in this building's sole opinion, but the assessments made by the intelligence community, as the DNI has made clear, as is being made clear today on Capitol Hill, uh, we provided the information that we had and made clear that it was preliminary, that there were active investigations, and that in situations especially like this, uh, that new facts come to light that uh, often change uh, what we know about an event. And we were very transparent about that, and we're, we're, we're being very transparent about it today, both here and up on Capitol Hill. Does the President still have faith in his intelligence community? Absolutely. Our, Intelligence professionals work uh, extremely hard every day uh, assessing a, an extraordinary amount of information uh, in an effort solely geared towards protecting the American people and American interests. Yeah. Yeah, Jay, can I ask about Syria? Um, mm -hmm. There is now a, a U.S. military force that is on the border, on the Jordanian side of the Syrian border. Secretary Panetta described it today as aiding the Jordanians, but having American troops that close to what's going on in Syria, is that not an, ex an escalation of our involvement there? Well, we have always said that contingency planning is the responsible thing to do, and we have been working closely for some time with our international partners, including Jordan, uh, on a variety of issues related to Syria. Uh, Jordan has been taking a leading role in providing humanitarian assistance, as you know, to Syrian refugees fleeing Assad's brutality and we coordinate closely on that issue with the Jordanians. As, uh, and as we have seen with the Syrian regime's uh, violations last week of Turkish sovereignty, our partners in the region are greatly affected uh, by Assad's brutal campaign. So we will continue to coordinate closely with our partners uh, moving forward as we have in the past. Uh, these are U.S. boots on the ground right next to the war zone. Is this an escalation or does it no, foreshadow it? It's not an escalation. It's us working with a partner uh, as part of our contingency planning to deal with uh, the impacts of uh, Assad's brutality. Uh, and I would point you to Secretary Panetta's comments. Well, last question there. As you know, many of the administration's critics would like to see a more active role. They would specifically like to see arming with the rebels. Are these troops any step toward that? Our position on providing military or lethal assistance has not changed. It is our position that uh, we, uh, that what's needed in Syria is not more weapons. What's needed is a political transition. You, you note critics who seem to support taking some sort of harder, more militaristic line, but they won't come forward and actually draw any real distinctions uh, from what they're proposing uh, at, compared to what the President is doing. Uh, if uh, someone on, in Congress or elsewhere wants to suggest that the United States should uh, engage militarily directly in Syria, they should say so. Uh, the President's position is that we need to continue to provide humanitarian assistance to the Syrian people. We need to continue to provide non-lethal assistance to uh, the opposition, the elements of the opposition who aspire to a democratic, inclusive future for Syria, and to work with our partners to isolate and punish Assad for his brutality, and we are doing that. So, since you raised it, are you denying that the United States is uh, helping to arrange covert military assistance to the rebels? Well, I'm not going to talk about covert anything from here, as you know. Uh, but I can tell you that our position is we will not, we are not providing uh, lethal assistance to the opposition in Syria. Yes. Jake. Um, going back to Libya, can I ask about this disconnect again between the State Department and the White House? Because I know you read to us from Under Secretary Kennedy's testimony today, but last night on a conference call with reporters, State Department officials said they never thought that this attack was linked 
to uh, protest. So is this revisionist history on the State Department's part, or are they getting different intelligence than you are? No, we all get the same intelligence, and I would point you again to what Pat Kennedy said in a public hearing today, that with regards to this specific question, because it relates to what Ambassador Rice said on television on Sunday, September 16th, and that is that uh, any administration, including any career official, not just a, a political appointee, who was on television on September, se uh, September Sunday, uh, September 16th, would have said exactly what Ambassador Rice said, because that was what she said was based on the assessments that we had available to us, the entire government, at that time. And I think I would point you to what the uh, DNI has said about uh, the assessments and how they have uh, been clarified and uh, evolved over time because of uh, new information that's come to light. Uh, that is the nature of these things. And efforts to uh, rush to a conclusion uh, are not helpful. What is uh, our responsibility is to provide the information that we can based on what we know, always with the caveat, which was always provided, uh, that uh, the information we have is preliminary and that more facts are coming to light. And this was especially true in the immediate aftermath of the attack. Is the President concerned about what we're hearing from military officials in Libya, a very volatile country, that not only were they asking for more resources, but not only was that not granted, but that resources were taken away? Again, I think I answered this uh, earlier. Uh, matters of the security posture in Benghazi, or in Libya more broadly, are under review uh, at the President's direction uh, by this accountability review board set up by Secretary of State Clinton. Uh, I can speak uh, broadly to what the President's priorities are, uh, which are, one, bringing to justice those who killed four Americans, two, uh, taking every me measure uh, we can to ensure uh, the security and safety of our diplomatic personnel and our facilities abroad, and uh, investigating uh, to the end what happened and why in Benghazi so that we can take steps to ensure it doesn't happen again. How soon does the President want preliminary answers from that review? Uh, he wants answers as soon as uh, answers are available. And he, what he wants is for the investigators to have uh, the space they need uh, to follow the facts and uh, reach conclusions based on the facts as opposed to speculation. And then can I get the President's thoughts on this uh, affirmative action case that's uh, before the Supreme Court today? Uh, as you know, I think the Justice Department uh, filed an amicus brief uh, so I would refer you to justice for uh, what's contained in that brief. Um, I don't have anything specifically, I haven't spoken to the President about this particular case. We're on the subject of affirmative action? Well, I mean, I think you know the President's position on affirmative action. Um, as, the as the Supreme Court has recognized uh, in the past, diversity in the classroom has learning benefits uh, for students, campuses, and schools. President Obama has said that while he opposes quotas and thinks an emphasis on universal and not race-specific programs is good policy, considering race along with other factors can be appropriate in certain circumstances. Uh, but again, I'm not going to get into the specifics of this or any other individual case. Uh, for that, I would refer you to the Department of Justice. Yeah. Jay, um, you've been citing uh, Under Secretary Kennedy and what he's saying in public today. <coughs> Congressional sources have said that on September 12th, the day after the attacks, uh, Under Secretary Kennedy did a conference <coughs> call with congressional staffers and others day after the attacks and said then this was not a protest, uh, this was not a spontaneous reaction to the, to the anti-Muslim video, that this was a coordinated attack. And so my question is, that was four days before Ambassador Rice went out on television, five shows, and said that we believe that it, that it is a reaction. Did she, did you and others mislead the public in, because you didn't want to admit there was a terror attack? Absolutely not. The President of the United States referred to it as an act of terror immediately after it occurred, Ed, as you know. Two, Pat Kennedy, the Under Secretary of State for Management, is testifying in public today. Uh, so I would look to what he says uh, before uh, your cameras and the American people, uh, rather than what congressional sources, whoever they may be, may be telling you. What, what, what so one second. Now, on September, if you're citing that on September 12th, the President called it terrorism. He, he used a phrase like act of terror. Act of terror. No of act of terror. Well, then why were you at this podium for several days after that saying we don't know if it's terrorism? If you're I, I never saying said that. I never said we don't know if it's terrorism. There, there was an issue about the definition of terrorism. This is by definition an act of terror, as the President made clear. What we were talking so about is now, what, on September 12th, the President believed it was terrorism? He said it was an act of terror, Ed. Okay. It was clearly, definitionally, if you look at the definition of terrorism, an assault with arms on an, uh, 
diplomatic. Several days after that, is it terrorism? We kept saying we don't know. Well, how how and can I you first revise that? check the transcript. The issue was what led to the attack, and that has been uh, an issue that we have provided assessments of based on the information that we have gleaned through the intelligence community, preliminary information. And we have made clear all along, as Ambassador Rice has made clear, clips that I'm, the parts of these clips that I'm sure don't always appear on some air, where she makes clear on Sunday, September 16th, that these were preliminary uh, assessments based on preliminary Several information. Days after the president said it was terror. You're making a distinction between an act of terror and uh, what led to the attack. An assault with violence and force and weapons against a diplomatic facility is by definition an act of terror. So let me ask you then, um, since it's been noted that tomorrow will be the one month anniversary of this terror attack, why hasn't the president given a speech or a news conference laying out to the American people sort of the aftermath of, of what was a terror attack, four Americans killed? Instead, he has been, the Republicans have been hitting him for talking about Big Bird several days out on the, on the campaign trail. He, he doesn't talk about this act of terror when he goes out and visits and talks with voters. Why won't he talk about it? Actually, Ed, I believe he's spoken uh, on a number of occasions about this, both in interviews and uh, when he went to Andrews to receive uh, with Secretary of State Clinton and the families of the four fallen Americans those caskets from Libya. And he spoke very clearly and poignantly about uh, the sacrifice that they made, uh, the risks that they took on behalf of the American people, and the interests uh, that we have abroad in places like Libya, uh, and of his absolute commitment to ensure that those were who are responsible be brought to justice. His absolute commitment that we do whatever we can uh, to ensure that uh, what happened in Benghazi does not happen again. Uh, so I, I do not agree with your assessment that he hasn't been talking about this. Uh, it is also the case that there is a, uh, a campaign going on and he uh, is out there just like his opponent talking about a variety of issues that are of interest to the American people. Uh, but he has spoken and, uh, about uh, the events in Benghazi on a number of occasions and, and you can be sure uh, he'll be speaking about them in the future. The last thing, uh, he also mentions out there that Al Qaeda is on some version of Al Qaeda is on the road to defeat, uh, and yet Al Qaeda may have been involved in this terror attack. We still don't know for sure. Um, and the Associated Press and others have noted that in Iraq, Al Qaeda has now doubled the number of fighters they have on the ground from a thousand to about twenty-five hundred. Mm -hmm. How does the president back up the idea that Al Qaeda is on the road to defeat if they're expanding in some? Well, places? what we have said all along, what the president has said all along, is that while. Uh, progress has been made in decimating the senior ranks of al-Qaeda and in decimating uh, al-Qaeda central in the Afghanistan-Pakistan region. And I think that is a, is a statement that uh, even the President's strongest critics could not contest, uh, that al-Qaeda remains our number one foe, not Russia, and that al-Qaeda remains uh, a, a dangerous uh, enemy of the United States and the American people, as well as people around the world, including in the Muslim world, and that we are committed every day to taking the fight to al-Qaeda. I think uh, that fact is evidenced by actions we take uh, around the world against al-Qaeda and its affiliates, uh, because it is such a pernicious and dangerous uh, enemy of the American people and our allies. Yes. Jay, earlier you said that people who claim they know all the facts aren't being straight. Why then were we told repeatedly by administration officials that this was a result of a spontaneous? Well, what I think it, you'll find, as I've said several times now, is that when we provided the assessments that we had based on the information uh, that the intelligence community had assessed, we made clear that they were preliminary assessments, preliminary assessments, and that facts uh, as they became available would be made known to you. Uh, that has been the case from day one and we have, uh, I think, been pretty transparent about uh, acknowledging when uh, new information has come to light that has changed the assessment of the intelligence community, which provides these assessments to Congress, uh, to the branches of government, to the White House, and, and through us to the American people. Where, where's the threshold by which this, these preliminary assessments are made public? They were obviously wrong. They were wrong leading up to the attack. They were wrong in the initial aftermath of the attack. Of the attack. How is it determined when to use these asses assessments, preliminary or not, even though they turn out to be wrong? Isn't there some concern? Well, we live a credit, a in a society that, that values transparency, and, and this is an administration that values transparency. So we had a tra for, we for our benefit, even though they turned out to be wrong. I think that's an editorial judgment that you're making. What we are saying is that when asked what happened, we gave our assessments based on the information that we had at the time. And we made clear in giving those assessments that what we knew at the time uh, might change as more facts 
were uh, found in the investigations that were underway. We have made that clear every step of the way. Ambassador Rice made that clear on Sunday, September 16th. And uh, it is our sole interest, the President's sole interest, to find out what exactly happened, why it happened, uh, what steps should have been taken to prevent it, what steps must be taken going forward to ensure that what happened in Benghazi does not happen again. That's his focus. Uh, others are focused on other things. His focus is on the safety and security of diplomatic personnel who are bravely serving this country overseas, finding those who killed four Americans and bringing them to justice, and taking steps to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Uh, one other question on a different subject, and that is Turkey. Uh, six straight day of cross-border hostilities, firing artillery, artillery between Syria and Turkey. Clearly, the, the civil war, to some extent, is spilling over into Turkey. Turkey is a member of NATO. Has there been uh, a concern expressed by Turkey to NATO, as far as you know, about uh, 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 activating any part of the treaty? And, and basically, what generally do you have to say about well, that? I have no information about communications between Turkey and NATO. I would refer you to Turkey and NATO. We stand with our Turkish ally and are continuing to cons consult closely on uh, the path forward. The onus is on the Syrian regime uh, to stop their provocative actions along the border and to respect Turkey's sovereignty. Bashar Assad has lost all legitimacy, long lost all legitimacy, to lead the Syrian people, and his regime is struggling to retain control of Syria. The government has lost control of large areas of the country, including cities where there is no fighting at all, uh, where there was no fighting at all several months ago. Defections are continuing and the economy is under unprecedented pressure. Uh, we have made clear, uh, as uh, the North Atlantic Council has made clear, uh, that the uh, assault on Turkish sovereignty by uh, the Syrian mil military is unacceptable. Uh, we stand by our Turkish allies. Yep. Jay, the IRS commissioner announced that he is stepping down November 9th, and I know that this is happening quickly, but is that the sort of position, considering the looming fiscal crisis, that the president would try and fill, fill that position quickly? Uh, I have no uh, personnel announcements to make uh, today. None today. Yes. Um, First the, identified. Uh, so. Yes, Tim Hummel from Bloomberg News. Very nice to see you, Tim. Thank you. Um, at the hearing today about Benghazi, Chairman Issa said that the, uh, the requests from within Libya for more security were rejected by the, by the State Department in hopes of creating a sort of normalization of a atmosphere. Was the White House in any way involved with the discussions or with the determination to create that sense of normalization? I'm not going to get into specifics that are under review by the Accountability, uh, accountability Review Board. Uh, I would point you to testimony being delivered by officials who are very close to the facts about our diplomatic security posture uh, as we speak on Capitol Hill in the very hearing that you reference. Um, the President's position has always been uh, that we need to ensure the safety and security of our diplomatic facilities and our brave diplomatic personnel. Uh, it is unquestionable that our civilian personnel overseas in dangerous places take risks on behalf of you and me every day. Uh, Chris Stevens and the other three Americans are heroes. Chris Stevens, as you know, went into Benghazi when there was still a civil war going on, when Gaddafi was still waging war against his own people. Uh, his heroism and bravery uh, must be noted. Uh, it is part of the risk that comes with these kinds of postings, and uh, it is part of what makes this country great, that there are individuals out there who are willing to do those jobs because they believe uh, that America needs to engage in the world, that our values uh, are still a beacon for the world. Um, as for the specifics about the security posture at Benghazi and elsewhere, I would have to point you to comments by State Department officials, as well as the Accountability Review Board. Let me move around here. Yes, Ken. Uh, Jay, what was the President's reaction to the shooting of the 14-year-old girl in Pakistan, and has the administration or anybody from the U.S. government been in, in touch with her family? I know that the President found the news reprehensible and disgusting and, and tragic. We strongly condemn the shooting of Malala uh, Yousafzai, if I pronounced that correctly. Uh, 
Uh, directing violence at children is barbaric, it's cowardly, and our hearts go out to her and the others who were wounded as well as their families. Uh, the United States has offered any necessary assistance to Malala. As part of this offer, the U.S. military has agreed to provide air ambulance and medical tr treatment at a facility suitable for her condition if it becomes necessary. Can I follow on that too? Uh, April. Uh, Jay, um, I want to uh, change to something else. I'm going back to the debates. Uh, this morning we heard President Obama on a tone on a morning show, and he said of his debate performance last week, he was too polite and there will be more activity at this debate. <coughs> What does he mean by activity? Um, I can tell you the President looks forward to the opportunity, as he does on every occasion, to go before the American people and present uh, his ideas for how to continue to move the country forward. Uh, he believes that we need to continue to invest in education, in innovation, in research and development, in our roads and bridges and schools. He believes that we have to make sure the middle class is not uh, in a situation where its taxes are going up, where average Americans see their tax burden go up so that we have to pay for a tax cut for millionaires and billionaires. He thinks that's the wrong policy. And I'm sure uh, you can expect that he will, as he has been all along, uh, talk about that distinction between his vision for moving forward and what he believes uh, is a vision to move back to the very policies that we tried and did not work. I mean, we've heard about how uh, huge tax, I covered it. We heard about these massive tax cuts that disproportionately benefit the wealthy are going to uh, move our economy forward and help everybody. Well, we were all here from 2001 to 2008, and we know what happened when those policies were implemented. A record surplus was turned into a record deficit. The middle class saw its income stagnate or decline. We put two wars on a credit card. We put tax cuts uh, on a credit card, or we simply didn't pay for them. And the result was the worst economic crisis that any of us have ever known in our lifetimes, with the possible exception of Lester. Going back to my question, um, when, and I, I'm not trying to be funny, but when, when the president was asked about his performance, Tom Jordan asked him about his performance mm -hmm. on the Tom Jordan Morning Show this morning. He said he was too polite and he, there will be, quote, more activity. Does that mean he will engage, he will retort back, will he come back, not necessarily quips, will he come back with, because many things he had a chance to throw some, I mean, being uh, Monday morning quarterbacks, mm -hmm. half the nation, to include his supporters, he had opportunity after opportunity and did nothing except clench his teeth in many instances. April, the President looks forward to next Tuesday. He sees it as an opportunity to make clear uh, what we need to do to move the country forward. Uh, you know, these are, these are chances for the American people to see uh, a very clear contrast between uh, an agenda and a, and a, and a vision uh, that moves the country forward and one that embraces policies that aren't theoretical but are empirical. We know what happens when we go down that road. We saw it. We all lived it. The President looks forward to making that case, making clear the difference, making clear the choice. Uh, and look, I think you know, he believes that facts matter. He believes that uh, the American people uh, want to hear from their leaders what it is they would do uh, if they were given the opportunity to serve in this office, in the Oval Office. Uh, he has been consistent from the day he started running for the presidency uh, up to this moment about what his vision is, who he's fighting for, what his policies are, their specifics, uh, and he will continue to be that way. And last question on this. Um, prior to the debate, Ben LeBolt said that they cut back on the president's debate prep because he had to be presidential. He's the president. He had things to do. I remember doing one debate or when he was in a conversation with John McCain, he said he could walk and chew gum at the same time. So um, will he this time, is he stepping up his debate prep again? Is he putting more into it? Is he doing that today? I'm not going to get into the president's uh, campaign schedule, his debate prep. I can simply tell you that I know that he looks forward to the opportunity that he believes the stakes are tremendously high uh, uh, because it's really about 
it's not about him, it's not about his opponent, it's not about one party or the other, it's about what would you do? What will you do when you get into office? Will you uh, ensure that middle class Americans don't have their taxes go up? Will you push a plan that turns Medicare into a voucher? Will you roll back regulations on Wall Street? Regulations that were put in place to prevent the financial crisis that we had, uh, that, to prevent the kind of financial crisis that uh, sent us into the worst recession in our lifetimes. Uh, those are issues that matter, and he looks very much forward to discussing them on Tuesday, all the way in the back. Um, several surveys of small business owners have been conducted over the past few weeks by different groups and have found that a vast majority of small businesses say they aren't hiring new workers because of uh, burdensome federal regulations. I wonder what feedback uh, the president has received recently um, from small business owners and if he has any concern that any of his federal regulations are stifling economic growth among small businesses. This president's committed to helping small business, as evidenced by the fact that he has signed into law, proposed and signed into law, 18 uh, small business tax cuts. Uh, you know, he understands clearly that small businesses are the engine of economic growth in this country. Uh, and he firmly believes that we need to be fighting for those businesses uh, rather than uh, giving tax breaks, for example, to companies uh, for moving jobs overseas rather than subsidizing oil and gas companies to the tune of $4 billion a year uh, when those very same companies are making record profits. Uh, you know, it's a debate he's looking forward to have on this issue and many others, and, and it's a debate that's been continuing uh, for weeks and months. Uh, you know, the president's out there making the case that his policies are designed to fight for uh, middle class Americans, and that includes small business owners, the vast majority of whom uh, are not affected by uh, the, the policy prescriptions when you hear the uh, critics say that we need to give tax cuts to millionaires and billionaires because uh, they, those tax cuts, in addition to helping Warren Buffett and other billionaires, will help small businesses. What they don't tell you is that their definition of small business includes hedge fund managers. Go to most main streets in America and ask them if a billionaire hedge fund, manager, hedge fund manager qualifies in their eyes as a small business. I think the answer would be, well, not so much. Uh, so the president's been very clear about who he's fighting for and the choices we have to make and the priorities that are reflected in his budget proposals, and he'll continue to be so. Thank you. Mark Lesson. Uh, Jay, when the president says he was too polite in the debate, does that mean that at the next one it'll be no more Mr. Nice Guy? He's going to be impolite, he's going to be blunt, he's going to come out with his, you know, with, with his arms swinging? The president looks true looks from forward. the too polite statement. We know, he, we know he's looking forward. We're all looking forward. <laughs> Yeah. The president will make a case for uh, the kind of America where we grow the economy from the middle out, for the kind of America where uh, consumers are protected from uh, insurance companies who want to deny them benefits uh, right at the moment when they need them, or credit card companies. Uh, that fill their applications forms with uh, all sorts of unintelligible detail that ends up uh, creating hardship for the very consumers that they bring in. Uh, that's why he put in place the Consumer Financial Protection Board. That's why he put in place health care reform. Uh, it's why he uh, has called on Congress to pass middle class tax cuts tax cuts that go to 98 percent of the American people. But Republicans have said no because they want taxes to go up on 98 percent of the American people unless millionaires and billionaires get tax cuts too. That's just bad policy and it doesn't reflect 
the, the values that this president believes are uh, so much uh, a part of the debate that we're having today. So I think you'll hear the president uh, make a very strong case uh, on Tuesday and going forward. Thanks, guys.